So it's happened to almost all of us. You're out on a nice warm summer day, enjoying your favorite ice cream cone, or a shake, or maybe even a slushy. And then your enjoyment is interrupted by the dreaded brain freeze, also known as the ice cream headache, or a cold stimulus headache, or for those that take themselves very seriously, sphenopalatine ganglio neuralgia. We probably won't use that one very much, but in this video we are going to talk about some of the details of brain freezes and the potential causes, even is there anything we can do about them, and obviously the relevant anatomy and physiological responses. So let's get to it. So what causes a brain freeze? Well, many of you will probably say, duh, it's eating cold things. And that is true, but let's go into a little bit more detail than that. It's actually cold substances passing over the structure called the palate. Now, the palate we're gonna show on this dissection here. Now, if you take a look, you can actually see that I'm tracing the whole palate here. But the palate can actually be subdivided into a hard palate and a soft palate. The hard palate is what people refer to as the roof of the mouth, and it's made up of bone. The anterior two thirds is referred to as the maxillary bone, where the posterior third of the hard palate is referred to as the palatine bone. Again, a pretty convenient name since it makes up the hard palate. The soft palate back here is made up of actual muscle tissue covered by mucous membrane. So when you look in the back of somebody's throat and you see the archway, and in the middle you see that little hangy doodle that we call the uvula, that's the soft palate. Now, the palate is very well vascularized, meaning it has a lot of blood vessels, and that's gonna play into our story, as well as all the nerve endings that are in the palate. But before we move on from that, I actually wanna show you what it looks like on the skeleton. Okay, so here is another view of the hard palate on our skeleton here. And one of the things that I wanted to show were these holes. You can see a hole here and a hole there. Now in anatomy, the name for hole is foramen, or foramina for plural. These holes here have specific names. The large one is called the greater palatine foramen, and the smaller one is called the lesser palatine foramen. These holes are imp important because the nerves and the arteries come through those holes to flare on to the roof of the mouth. And the names for the arteries and the nerves are actually pretty convenient. The ones coming through the larger hole, or the greater palatine foramen, are called the greater palatine arteries and the greater palatine nerve. Same idea with the smaller hole, the lesser palatine arteries and the lesser palatine nerve. Now, what do the arteries do? The arteries vascularize or provide a blood supply to the roof of the mouth or the palate, whereas the nerves provide sensation. So what do the arteries and those nerves have to do with the brain freeze? Well, as that cold substance, that wonderful ice cream, passes over the hard palate and those nerves, those blood vessels will actually vasoconstrict. Those nerves are gonna sense that, and they'll also sense the temperature change, and that's going to send a signal up through the brain. Now the problem is, or the thing that we notice with a brain freeze, is we don't feel pain on the roof of our mouth. We tend to feel it in other areas, on the forehead, the side of the head. There's been some people who have mentioned that they feel it on the back of their head, but something has to be explaining why are we feeling pain or a sensation in the area that isn't actually being stimulated, and that's a story of referred pain. So to go a little bit deeper into this idea of referred pain, I have to bring back those nerves that we mentioned, the greater and the lesser palatine nerves. Now those nerves are actually branches of a larger nerve called the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve is this nerve that branches into three branches, tri, hence the name trigeminal, to certain areas of the, the face. And it's nicknamed the great sensory nerve of the face. And those two nerves, the greater and lesser palatine nerves, bring sensation in and eventually join up with that larger nerve there. So let's take a look at the skeleton here to kind of show you that pathway. Again, I'm touching right here, that foramen that I mentioned at the roof of the mouth. The nerves will travel inside the bone here, but if you were to zoom into this little fissure or this little crack right there, you'd see that the nerves pass through this little nerve cluster called a ganglion or a group of little nerve cell bodies or neuron cell bodies called a ganglion. Now, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because I mentioned that sometimes people refer to this headache as a sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia, and the nerves just pass through that ganglion. I don't really think it's that great of a name. I'm just being honest here because that ganglion doesn't have a ton to do with it. It's just kind of the nerves pass right through there and join up with the trigeminal nerve. 
So now that we've established that those nerves from the roof of the mouth are gonna bring sensation in from the roof of the mouth as well as from the blood vessels, and those go into the trigeminal nerve, that's eventually going to make it back to the brain. So I kind of want you to think about this. Remember the trigeminal nerve had three main branches. I do this because one of the main branches goes to the forehead, the other goes around the cheek and internal structures of the nose, the nasal cavity, and the roof of the mouth in this case. And the lower third nerve goes down to the part of the jaw and gets sensation from the skin of that area. Now, even those three branches have further branches. So kind of think that we're bringing all this sensation back. I want you to think of nerves just merging and merging and merging until we get to the three. And then eventually all three of those trigeminal nerve branches branch into one which you can actually see on this side of the brain here. This thing that I'm pinching here is actually the root of the trigeminal nerve before it branches out into the three and then further branches out into the multiple other nerves that serve the base. Now, all that sensation coming in through this nerve is actually gonna come in and relay, if I turn this over, into the brain stem, specifically into this area called the medulla oblongata, this region here. Now you can't really see much with the naked eye, but if you were to look at this under the microscope, you'd actually see this nucleus or this area where these neurons from the nerves come in and relay called the spinal trigeminal nucleus. So why do I bring up another term that's kind of jargony and long called the spinal trigeminal nucleus? Well, that's because everything from that nerve, I shouldn't say everything, but the majority of sensation from that nerve, like pain, temperature, and touch, is coming in there and merging onto that nucleus. So let's say a signal comes in from the roof of the mouth, from ice cream, and it goes in and hits that nucleus. Now what tends to happen is we don't actually feel the pain there. With referred pain, you often get a sensation of pain or reference from an area that's more used to getting stimulated, if that makes sense. So maybe the front of the head or around the cheek. Some people have mentioned around the eyes with brain freezes, even from the back of the head. And those areas are fine. What's happening is the brain's getting a sensation into that nucleus and it's like, oh, where am I used to feeling that sensation? More so on the front of the head, even though everything right here is just fine. So is there anything that we can do to help with brain freezes? I came across a couple of suggestions on just, you know, looking for home remedies or things that people have tried in the past and then also kind of got into the science of it. And during one article I read, a person suggested, stop eating cold things. Nope, it's not that one. We're gonna keep eating ice cream because it's amazing. So we might be able to slow down how fast we're eating the ice cream and that could potentially help. But the things that are going to typically help with a brain freeze are, can you warm the roof of the mouth again? Now, it's not like many of you are eating ice cream and have a warm cup of tea next door that you can just slurp on if you get a brain freeze. And so one of the fastest things you could potentially try is push the tongue to the roof of the mouth. And that could warm the area, warm those nerves up and warm those blood vessels and help. When I was a little kid, we had people tell me, put your thumb at the roof of your mouth. It was told to me to use pressure, but it's probably not the pressure that's really helping. It's probably just, you know, getting some warmth back onto the palate there to help reduce that, you know, tight vasoconstriction of those blood vessels. So those are some really quick things you could do. Is it worth it to use Tylenol or ibuprofen? Not really. These headaches tend to last seconds to maybe minutes and they resolve pretty quickly once the temperature is restored to the palate. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how brain freezes work. Again, always comment, subscribe, let us know some of the things you guys wanna see. And we also now have a Wizio account, which means that you guys can get on and actually ask us personal questions and get a personalized video response. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check that out. We'll put that in the link below and goodbye. <laughs>